You are now watching a Lucky Penny Shop product feature. Item provided by Top Munch for review. Hey, it's Lucky Penny Shop, and it's time for a new subscription box. Now, I mentioned in past videos that I had stopped the ones I was doing in 2016. Thanks to them, though, for all the ones they sent me, and wanted to start some new ones. But then keep it down to like two or three months so I can keep trying different boxes. This is a Top Munch world's flavors in a box so thanks for stopping by hope you enjoyed the video let me know at the end leave me a comment wait till the end because you never know what's gonna happen okay cut away from yourself which i did not so here we go i would like to do a real unveiling here from start to finish one two three go Ooh, now that's a lot of paperwork a lot more paperwork than i'm used to seeing in a subscription box top music we at top munch Believe in helping our customers experience all of the flavors, sight, sounds, and that every culture around the world has to offer. With this mission in mind, we have launched our music library, Top Music, whereby we will educate you about the music from different cultures each month. We will select a diverse set of songs from each country and prepare a playlist of the same, which you can listen to. We recommend listening to the songs in Top Music while rel relishing on the Turkish treats in the Top Much box. Ooh. Hopefully it is all Turkish treats. So there is more information for anybody out there that likes to learn more. There's a feedback option there for Top Munch. There's their Facebook, there is their Twitter, and there's their Instagram. Okay? And then now, a letter. Ooh. I have no idea what this is all about. This month's snack box is from Turkey. Oh, and there's some information. We aim to educate you to help you travel better. All right, so read all that. If you would like to. I can't read it all for you now. Here's a nice letter from the founder of Top Munch. Our journey this month has brought us to Turkey, a transcontinental country in Europe, Asia. All right, so it looks like, ooh, pistachio cotton candy. Hmm. Oh, so this lists all the stuff. I'm not going to show it to you. I am going to try some pistachio cotton candy today. All right, here we go. Exciting and the unveiling of my treats Look at that Very very interesting and this is that pistachio cotton candy Now that is cool and it's like a like a pound cake or something mm, Vintage food corp. All right, so you've gotten a little sneak peek Let me uh, move this off to the side do some organizing come back and I'm gonna taste my treats Okay, so I am going to try this one first. It is first on the list. And then here was the information. So I'll kind of show you that so you can read it. I might read it all. Let me see. So Pismania or Pismania is a Turkish sweet made by blending flour, okay, which is then roasted in butter and pulled into a fine into fine strands of sugar. Very interesting. Nothing like cotton candy. It is garnished with ground pistachio nuts, although the texture is similar to cotton candy. Both differ in preparation methods and ingredients used. That is a correct statement. So let's see. There is the packaging. Vintage Food Corp. Oh, there is some information. Now this has got some weight to it. Let's see. It says 8,8 8, 8 ounces. I don't think that's the total weight of this. There's some more information there with the expiration date. And that is it. Turkish cotton candy with pistachio. Allergens. Okay. Let's just see. I just want to sniff this. I don't know. Something says sniff it. It's wrapped in looks like another bag. So it's a bag and a bag. Alright. And now we can see a little bit better out of that plastic. Yeah, it's got a really interesting feel to it. It does kind of remind me of flour. And then another bigger bag. Look at that, and then all the pistachio. Ooh, here we go. I'm going to go right in and give this a whiff. Whiffy. I don't smell pistachio. I do smell like a sugary flavor. Hmm. Let me get some, let me get this fun little display tray out. I thought this would be, this would make a good tray to really kind of look at this. Ooh, there you go. Look at that. Probably not the best tray, but what I had handy here and I haven't used one in a while so now you can kind of get a good look at it 
And now I'm going to, I'm just going to take a bite. Don't be afraid, just eat it. Here's what I say. Now I have had lots of cotton candy, right? I have my own machines. I used to make it commercially. Okay, let me try it. Try it again. Okay, it breaks apart different than cotton candy in your mouth, and it melts differently. What does it remind me of? Like a very, very thinly layered, uh, like um, a flaky cracker. And just look at it. It almost reminds me of like insulation in a house. And it's soft to the touch, and look how it breaks apart. See, cotton candy would melt and it would harden up. I don't know if this is going to do that. One more bite. And you get a hint of the pistachio, but it's very buttery and creamy. That's why it kind of reminds me of like a buttery cracker. Hmm. This one is really, really interesting. Let's chalk that one up as, that's a good one. How's that? How's that chalking up? I'll bring this all out a little bit later as a final presentation. Okay. How exciting is that? Very exciting. The next one is a bar. Oh, and by the way, if I mispronounce things, I do apologize. I don't have a vast knowledge of foreign languages and pronunciations as such. But then again, even here in the USA, People pronounce the same thing differently, so all the experts out there can't know every version or dialect of a language. All right, here we go. This is, well, I don't think so anyway. Maybe they study that. Unless they're, you know, that's what they study. Okay, so me, Albany. Albany, that's what I would call it. This is a milk chocolate coated bar with caramel and biscuit. Albany in Turkish translate to take me. And that is what this chocolate is all about. Take me and enjoy a scrumptious bite. Scrumptious. I used to, I had a video, I think I used the word scrumptious two or three times and I had comments, who uses the word scrumptious? I have never heard the word scrumptious. Why does he use the word scrumptious? Here we go, here's my scrumptious bar. Ooh, and it pulls apart kind of bar. Another one. There we go, look at that. I know I like this. Is it a Twix or a Kit Kat kind of thing? No. Flavor wise, it almost had like a milk candy flavor to me. I'm not getting a lot of chocolate. I think it's just because there's more biscuit, a lot more cookie. So that one there. I know, since I'm used to American Twix and Kit Kats and those kind of bars, there's nothing like that nowhere near as sweet. All right, next one. So that could be something. Sicolatali. I don't know. I'm sure I'll hear about it. But either way, I'm going to eat it. Okay, that's the best part for me. Crunchy wafer leaves. A creamy and delicious chocolate coating. Alkler chocolate wafer provides that familiar crispy flavor full of happiness. Oh, I like all that. Happiness and joy. Okay, not much more on the wrapper for this one. So let's just dig right in. Looks like a nice bar. Okay, here we go. More wafer-like cookies. Haven't I said in these videos, a lot of countries use these kinds of wafer cookies. Or crackers. I have to tell you, when I've tasted both of these bars, the initial taste is not what I'm expecting, like what I'm used to. So, I don't want to say it's off-putting, but it's a little bit different flavor chocolate to me. All right, that's it on that. It's a very little more sweeter than the last one to me. 
It's tasty, but you know, when you're used to other chocolate, you have to kind of adjust slightly your taste palette. Ulker, in their tradition of manufacturing tasteful delights, bring to you Sizivik. Sizivik? Now this just looks like a cheese cracker. This has been a fun box so far. I really like that interesting cotton candy stuff. Stuff. And when you see me doing this a lot, it's because I'm just trying to get different angles. Maybe see different text that I didn't see. So I'll flip things, I'll move things around. I'll do that and kind of get a feel of the packaging. You're kind of squishing as you go. Here we go. Mm. Crispy looking. It's a light crispy cracker. You almost need something to drink with this. Let's check out the cheese. Let's check the cheese. There we are. Is it very cheesy? No, there's a lot more cracker than cheese. It's a very light cracker, it's very airy. It breaks apart as you can see, just look it. It falls right apart, so. That is the cracker. And the cracker doesn't have what you think of like a Ritz cracker, like a buttery taste. Definitely different than that. Not a very strong flavor to the cracker or the cheese. I'm kind of getting this feeling that everything seems to be a little bit lighter than what we're used to here. All right. Hazarab Hazarbaba. Hazarbaba. Turkish Delight Real Fruits Orange. I'm looking forward to Turkish Delight. I actually had a company email me asking me to check out all kinds of flavors of Turkish Delight. And it was before the holidays and I never really got back to them. I was busy with Christmas. Let me know what you think about that. No gelatin, gluten-free, suitable for vegans, suitable for vegetarians. I have a feeling it's gonna be orange. Real orange peel. What else does it say? Legend has it that in this endeavor to cope, did I go like this like three times? With all of his wives, the Sultan summoned all of his confectionery experts and ordered them to produce a unique dessert to add to his collection of secret recipes. All right. I'll make sure to hold up this page. There's an open here, so I should pull that. There we go. Ooh, Turkish Delight. I've had some Turkish Delight before. This is not the first time. Look at that. It has a very light orange color. And look, it's all, all the powder's coming off. I'm gonna squish it. I gotta squish it. Okay, so it's not, it's sort of gummy-like. I'm gonna take a bite. Well, sniff, don't sniff the powder. There's the inside. And right away, I bit on a orange peel. This is much harder than this. So it's almost like you're getting this nice, soft, gummy-like, and then getting a piece of beef jerky in there, where you get a little resistance on your teeth, and you have to kind of hmm, work at it, work at it. But it's good. I really like the orange peel. I like the consistency. You can see it here. And the bite difference between the two in one candy. Very tasty. All right. Melbourne Del Delicacies. Here's another one. Something kind of nutty. Okay. Three kinds. Melbourne is an old Mediterranean delicacy. Its characteristic flavor comes from the... Its characteristic flavor comes from the use of mastic, an aromatic resin of the mastic tree, mainly native to Greece. Melbourne resembles fruit jelly, 
except it's traditionally made with grape molasses. Thickened with starch and flavored with rose water. Mastic orange blossom and stuffed with pistachios. Melbourne these days are covered with apricot paste, rose petals, crushed pistachios, even chocolate. This requires another dish. I'm going to take each one and I'm going to eat each one. This one probably, hmm, almost strawberry flavored smelling. This one, not even orange. I can't, it's a, it's a, it's a weird smell. And this one reminds me of like a piece of log or something. Like wood log, but it, it's fig. I'm pretty sure that's like a fig or something like that. All right, let me bring in my cutting board. These look like they'd be fun to chop up, wouldn't they? Number one, here we go. Let us look inside our delicacy. And here is the first one I shall cut. Slowly I cut. And my tool is struggling to cut. It's not a knife. I'm using it like a knife, but it isn't. Look at how pretty that is inside. I like that. Let me just take a piece and take a bite. Very gummy-like. More like a homemade gummy though, if you know what I'm saying. Those are totally different. It breaks apart real easy. Cherry strawberry, having a hard time with that one because of the pistachio. Hmm. I have to think about that one. Let us cut this one here, but let me grab a real knife. Okay, this knife now is part of my mini kitchen set, so it's made to resemble a regular knife. This one should cut much better. It does, look inside, look what we find inside. Is that still a pistachio? Let's dig this guy out here. You know, it sure doesn't look like a pistachio. It's not green. Here we go. Those are big chunks. Think of a starburst. It's kind of like two together, so thickness-wise, that's a lot to put in your mouth. It's almost more cashew-like. I believe that's cashew. Interesting flavor on that one. I've been saying that a lot. You almost have to rethink your palate when you try different foods like this. All right, let me clean off my little cutting tool here. Look at that one. Didn't I say that one looked very much like a fig? All right, I got most of it off. And a log, chop. Watch your fingers. There's pistachio in there. Ooh, look at that. Is that beautiful or what? I think it's beautiful. I'm gonna cut here. And I'm gonna eat this piece because it's got most of the nuts. Hmm. I'm really struggling drawing one particular flavor. As you hear as I'm chewing it. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, something in there, figish or something like that. It smells more like a Fig Newton. All right, so there's the three all chopped up. Take a look, I'll give you one more inside look. Very interesting snack on that one. All right. One last one, here we go. This is Ochre Clip Sesame Sticks. Sesame Sticks um, are not new to most of us, but Ochre takes this, simple, takes this simple concept further and offers us the perfect in-between meal snack in small portions. Okay. There's that. There is that. There's that. Here's this. 
put some on here and see. I don't even know if they'll, oh yeah, they'll fit on there. Most of them will. Right in. I knew I'd like these. I don't know why, but what am I tasting? Okay, here's the ingredients. Vegetable fat, salt, raising agents. Yeah. Does not contain lard and its derivatives. I guess it's the little sesame I'm tasting. I won't say it's almost peanut peanut buttery, but that just could be the sesame. Alright, let me do this. I am going to. Oh yes, I do like them. These would be good in a cheese spread. Dip them in. Let me bring it all back in and wrap it up. All right, so there you go. That is my first ever top munch. Let me tell you, well, let me show you. I'm gonna tell you, I really enjoyed it. And thanks to them for sending this to me again. Now, what I, could I say I had a favorite one? Hmm. I think they're all pretty interesting to try. Um, would I go back to any particular one? Yeah, I would eat this again. This one I think is just interesting, so I probably would try that one again. The bars, like I said, a little bit different than what you're used to here in the USA, but still tasty. The cracker, very mild and light tasting. I did like the sesame sticks. So overall, I'm going to say a really tasty box and happy that I was able to check it out on video for you today. So let me know in the comments what you think and if you've had any of these snacks before. And if you want to see more monthly boxes, look in that description. I have a playlist there. Or as always, you could just search Lucky Penny Shop. Later. If you're looking for the item you just saw in the video, click here. Watch more videos by clicking here. Don't forget to share on social media and give a thumbs up. Hey, LPS Dave. What's up, Butch? Make sure they don't forget to subscribe. Oh yeah, please click here to subscribe to Lucky Penny Shop. And always remember when you see a Lucky Penny, pick it up.